Okay, so we have seen uh, quite a few trackers already in these videos. Uh, we would like to, to see how do they compare. Right? And this is one of the, the key things as we will uh, discuss again at the end of the video. So for this, we'll take a paper, a recent paper, 2019, IJCV, International Journal of Computer Vision, uh, which presents the paper EKLD. And uh, in this uh, paper, there is a comparison between uh, five different trackers, which are listed here with different colors as well. <clears throat> Let's uh, briefly go over them. So ICP, it's the name for the um, tracker that we've seen in by Kung and Tedaldi, that basically it's doing uh, hard associations and iterative closest point on two point sets. EMICP is the one uh, from uh, University of Pennsylvania, too, or et al. So what they do is they do motion compensated event features and track them. We have already seen them, this uh, it's using soft data association. KLT uh, MCEF, which is motion compensated event frame. Uh, basically, it's running the classical algorithm KLT, Canada Lucas Tomasi tracker, on the um, frames that are motion compensated. So, motion compensated images, and we know these frames what uh, they are because we've seen them in the, in the video on, about the event representations. So, these are uh, the one EM ICP is using point sets and MCEF is using images. So a different representation of events. KLT HF is the classical uh, KLT tracker that we are running it on reconstructed images. So grayscale images obtained from the high pass filter uh, proposed in uh, 2018 ACCV and We've seen this uh, high pass filter as well in the video of image reconstruction. And finally, EKLT, the fifth method, is the one proposed in, in the paper that we've seen in a previous video that is doing joint tracking and flow estimation um, using the event generation model and it's comparing these brightness increment images. Right, so, the first two are working on point sets, and the bottom three are work, working on, on images somehow reconstructed images or motion compensated images. Okay, how do we compare them? Uh, well, there are many metrics that we could uh, devise to compare them. And here we just take a look at two. One is accuracy and the other one is feature age. Accuracy is answering this question, how accurate is the tracker? And for that, we will need to provide some ground truth of where the features are on, to compare our tracker. And the second question is feature age, which is uh, for how long does uh, does it track? Is it a few seconds? Is it half a second? To have an idea. And here on the right, we compare the plots of the different trackers. Basically, we'll see how these curves are built from uh, what it's on the on the left. On the left is different scenes, videos, and we. Uh, initialize the, the features on the first frame and uh, then just track them until they are gone. There is no feature reinitialization, just initializing one frame and track as, as much as possible. And what the, the plots represent, the plot on the right, is um, different curves, so one color for each algorithm. On the horizontal axis is time, on the vertical axis is the error pixels with respect to ground truth. Ground truth in this case provided by uh, uh, we know the location of the feature at any point in time could be provided by a classical algorithm on the frames and then interpolating in between them. And uh, each of these curves of the different algorithms has uh, like a mean curve that it's uh, the average and then the average error as time progresses and then some bands and this band is basically proportional to the number of features uh, being tracked. That's why you see that it's large or big at the beginning and then as time progresses and features as lost are lost, as you can see in these videos, then these, these bands, they become uh, thinner until basically in the end you are tracking just one feature or so. Okay, so 
to compare the methods you just not compare it on one scene you compare on multiple of them so this is just one like a poster so you go into a data set and collect uh, data and ground truth these are somehow textured scenes then these are more natural scenes that also present the occlusions and maybe they have uh, not so many strong edges at least here and um, even more more sequences like uh, a drone that is flying or from a self-driving car or, or a car like a driving sequence could be self-driving or not and uh, yeah we plot the different curves and analyze so for example it's able to track uh, nicely in this sequence um, basically the the stronger the edges are the um, the better it could track uh, this one for example tracks for shorter amount of time so this is kind of uh, quantifying and good but uh, in the end we would like to have a table comparing numbers right and that's what we have here we are, have a table where we are comparing accuracy um, so tracking error uh, normalized tracking error um, for uh, the columns are the five different methods and the rows are eight different scenes or sequences and here the tracking error means that it's normalized by the length of the tracks for each combination of method and sequence and well these are just numbers comparing the algorithms and this is for the feature age on the top table is the accuracy and the bottom table is uh, the feature age that is normalized divided by the length of the tracks of the ground truth so what the algorithm is able to track using just the, the frames because it could be that it's not tracking more uh, because the feature goes out of the field of view which is then impossible to track right? so you need to normalize and give some relative numbers Okay, so these numbers are okay, good for a paper, but it's also good to um, plot them. And that's what uh, we try to show in this plot, um, to show the performance metrics. So and we have two performance metrics, uh, tracking error on the vertical one and feature age on the horizontal one, and uh, we plot them. The algorithms with different colors. And then now we are, it's easier to make some analysis, right? So we say that um, for example, the ICP with hard data association, it's uh, one of the earliest algorithms and uh, it's not tracking for very long and also the error, it's, it's kind of high. Then is, instead of using hard data associations, you use soft data association and um, it, yeah, it works much better. This is a, a point sets and then the other three are kind of uh, working on images and they somehow show that they work a bit better than using point sets so although they're maybe a bit more expensive because now we're processing every pixel and um, yeah there is not maybe too much difference between using motion compensated images uh, and using a high pass um, filtered image reconstructed and then running the klt on, on each of those what we see is that the, the last algorithm, maybe it's also because it's the most computationally expensive, but it achieves best accuracy, so less than a pixel, and um, feature age is also quite uh, quite decent across the different scenes. So each of these dots represents uh, one of the eight sequences, right? There are one, two, three, four, and another four, eight scenes. So this is good kind of to get a, uh, an idea of how the different trackers compare. Uh, what it's missing is would be like we need an, a third axis that is the, the computational performance. So currently EKLT, and the, it has a Python version. It's not processing too many events. It's just a thousand events. Whereas real time, depending on the scene, on the, the texture and the edges, it could be like 200,000 events per second for a resolution of a, of a Davis 240C, so 240 by 180. If you have more more pixels, obviously you also get more events. Yeah, but so this is kind of comparing them and trying to plot them, the different algorithms to get a, an idea of, of uh, how they compare. Um, 
so let's do some discussion of the trackers. So the advantages, we've seen that uh, most of them, they have low latency. They can provide many hundreds of updates per second per feature. And this is because we are updating on event-based uh, uh, manner or every few events. Um, some algorithms, they achieve some pixel precision and tracking for several seconds, such as KLT. Um, yeah, on many sequences uh, that we can see in, in the different plots. And we saw a preliminary benchmark is also good. We, that's uh, five trackers, eight diverse sequences going from uh, hard, uh, um, strong edges like uh, high contrast into going to more natural scenes. So the good thing is that there are some trackers out there, out there and um, trying to get sub-pixel precision. We are, we are getting there. What are the disadvantages? Well, that it's not as mature as uh, frame-based tracking, right? So there is a, a lack of a established benchmark, benchmark uh, to advance the state of the art. This means that tomorrow, if I want to design a new tracker, I would like to be able to compare it. And it's not so easy to re-implement all these methods. Many of them, they don't have the code available online. So it would be nice if there would be uh, clear data sets and metrics uh, to benchmark and compare the, the trackers. And the, the performance highly depends on the scene. This is something that we know that the events depend on motion and depends on texture. And yeah, so the, I mean, in the end, we would look for some average numbers, not just the, um, the value of a tracker in one sequence. And uh, we, we compare them mostly com about uh, accuracy and feature age, and, but um, some trackers are maybe still expensive. Research is not always about optimizing for speed. There is an accuracy computational performance trade-off that is not quantified yet for most trackers. And this would be very nice if, if it could be compared. Although we know that it's still at, at the research stage, we maybe don't want to optimize so much for for speed, we are looking for what's the best model or the best uh, approach to um, to get uh, accuracy, to, to see the potential of, of event-based sensors for tracking. Um, yeah, um, that's basically it. And looking forward to more discussions in, in class. And uh, the references for this section, uh, for this tracker section is um, 4.1 in the survey paper and papers that I try to reference at the bottom of each slide. So you can take a look at the different papers with the trackers and the, and the plots and the, the videos. Sometimes they have videos attached. And if you want to know also more about KLT tracker, you can look at uh, classical computer vision books on the topic of this feature, feature tracking. Yeah, that's, that's it for the trackers. Thank you very much.